Hello， 大家好啊 ！Hello everyone， 好开心可以喺生命堂见到大家。So happy to see you in live from Hong Kong。Yeah， 今日咧我哋准备咗好多好好嘅节目俾大家喎。Come on， we've prepared a lot of great things for you。有我哋咧嘅 Monty 牧师咧分享呢、這个。更加靠近永恒嘅呢个嘅信息啊 ！Yeah, we've got our pastor Monty to share the message of closer to eternity. 全新嘅系列。Wow, it's a new series. 啊，大家引颈以待啊，定系啊 ？Wow, we are looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah， 咁但系咧，首先咧，我哋要敬拜同赞美啊 ！Come on. Yeah, first of all, like we will worship God first. Let's go. Come on. 
正啊！歡迎大家翻到嚟。Hey, welcome back！ 好<笑>開心可以同大家一齊享受呢個崇拜今日啊 ！Yes, so excited to just worship with you guys。尤其是咧喺呢個啱啱過中秋啦。Yeah, how was your mid autumn festival？ 食咗好多月餅啦，相信大家係嘛 ？Yeah, did you enjoy the mooncake？ 希望唔係榴蓮月餅啦。<笑> I hope it's not durian。係啦，可能有啲人中意。不過係唔緊要。我哋咧好想咧歡迎新嘅朋友啊 ，OK 啊 ？Yeah, anyway, we want to welcome you as our new friends. Yeah， 俾啲 emoji 我哋新嘅朋友。Yeah， come on. give some emoji, show your love. 多啲嘅我哋嘅 effect 喺呢一度。Yeah， like bring more love and warmth.、Oh. Come on 啊，咁啊，但系咧我哋有样新正嘢咧要介绍俾新嘅朋友。Yeah， we've got something excited to show you. 就系 Life House 生命堂 DNA。Yeah， Life House DNA。所有新嘅朋友咧，我会建议大家喺呢一度起步啊。Yeah, we encourage everyone who are new, like, and want to know more about church, like, to to come, uh, watch the video. 一個咧三十分鐘嘅短片咧，係講緊咧，即係我哋生命堂嘅價值啦，我哋嘅去向啦。Yeah, it's a thirty minutes long video,、mm. and it's about like our church value, like what we believe in for. 係啊嘛，所以咧鼓勵大家喺呢一度咧下面嘅連結咧可以登記喎。Yeah, you can check it out in our,、uh, on the link on the screen. 非常之好嘅一個起步點啊！ Yeah, it's a great start. Yeah, 咁啊，接落嚟有啲咩發生咧嚇 ，Vivian? Yeah, that would be tithing, right? 係，冇錯。其中一個最喜愛嘅環節就係十一奉獻嘅時間。而家 Yeah, it's one of like my our favorite part is the tithing.、Yeah. So let's look at the tithing scripture. 咦，睇睇今個月奉獻經文先咯。Yeah, it's in two Corinthians nine eight. 嚟自哥林多後書嘅九章八節。Yeah, it says yes. God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace, so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. 咁正嘅英文 ，OK， 中文都唔差嘅 ，OK <笑>。上帝咧能够咧将各样嘅恩赐咧多多赐给你们啊，令到你哋咧喺各方面咧常常富足有余，可以多行各样嘅善事。Yeah, I love what God says. Like the promises、wow. in the scripture. 冇错，我好中意咧神咧喺呢度讲嘅应许俾我哋。Yeah, of course, tithing is not a trade. 系啦，冇错，即系我哋讲嘅神奉献咧，唔系一个交易嚟嘅喎。Yeah, but God's promises are real. 但系咧，神嘅应许咧系真实噶。Yeah, because it happens in so many of our our friends, our leaders, our pastors. In the church. 冇錯啦，呢度講到應許咧，其實有好多好多應驗咗咧，喺我哋嘅嘅教會嘅朋友啦，我哋嘅領袖啦，我哋嘅牧師啊，甚至我哋嘅朋友上邊喎。Yeah, God blesses in 
every way in our lives. 你知道咧，神咧喺各样嘅诶诶方面咧，都系祝福我哋嘅。Yes, so how we can do tithing? 咦，咁我哋点样去做神嘅奉献咧 ？Yes, so like we give like the ten percent of our salary, our income to God like through local church. 咁就系讲紧咧，我哋将自己收入嘅十分之一透过本地教会奉献俾神。And I really believe that like God will show you His. Blessings is way to you. Wow, 我好相信咧，我哋咧系神咧会诶透过我哋做呢一个嘅神一奉献咧，会大大咧去祝福你。Yeah, let's give it a try. 嚟咯，试下咯。Wow, 教会我哋好中意咧一齐咧做呢个领圣餐嘅时间啊 ！Church, we love to do communion together. 因为咧我哋咧见到我台上面咧有呢个咩嚟噶提子汁，同埋有饼。<笑> OK 啊，今日系。Yeah, we've got grape juice and some biscuits on the table. 咁咧可能咧你而家咧都系喺你个厨房啊，或者 somewhere 咧你去准备下啲嘢食先。OK 啊。Yeah, feel free to grab your、uh, biscuits, your snacks, your drinks. 系啦，无论系咖啡啊，或者系咩嘅包啊、饼都唔紧要啊，其实系。Yeah. You could pick like coffee or bread or whatever. Because the most important thing is that we are all together to celebrate Jesus in the Eucharist, which is what we are doing for him. Yeah, the food and drinks are not important, but like more important is about Jesus. We celebrate what Jesus has done for us. Yeah, so this celebration is actually talking about how we are going to remember Jesus for what he has done for us. So I have a passage that I want to share with you. Yeah, communion is not all about like what Jesus has done for us, and I want to share with you a scripture. Very important. This passage is in Psalm 103. Yeah, in Psalms 103, verses three. That he says that he covers all our sins, and heals all our diseases. Yeah, here he says that he gives us all our sins and heals all our diseases. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus. Wow, this passage says that we have been healed in Jesus went to the cross for us, like because He wants to take away all the sins, all the diseases. Because we believe that Jesus said that He went to the cross for us. 誒佢喺最後嘅晚餐裏邊攞起咗一個包咧，就擘開咗咧，俾門徒咧就話呢個咧係我嘅身體，係為你哋寫起嘅喎。Yeah, in the last supper with、uh, Jesus with his disciples, he says like、uh, when he pick up a, a bread, like he says like oh this is my body, I sacrifice it for you。等到咧我哋咧可以得到醫治喎，其實係。So that we can get the healing。呢個咧就係我哋相信咧耶穌可以俾我哋咧有醫治嘅盼望喎。Yes, so this is what we believe for church。每一次咧我哋。领圣餐嘅时候，或者你喺屋企领圣餐嘅时候，你都相信咧耶稣可以医治你嘅疾病。Yeah, whenever we do the communion together, or you do it alone at home, like you believe that Jesus can heal you. 因为咧呢个咧就系圣经里边所讲到噶。Yeah, because that's what Bible says. 可能睇紧影片嘅朋友咧，有一啲咧身体上面嘅病患，或者你所爱嘅人身体上面咧系好有医治嘅需要噶。Yeah, maybe like you, you have some、uh, health problems、uh, on yourself or like on in your families or friends. You are looking for、uh, Jesus' help. You 相信咧，我哋一齐领呢个圣餐嘅时候，要记住耶稣系可以医治，好想医治你噶。Yeah, just believe that like Jesus wants to heal you, and He will heal you. 亦都讲到咧，耶稣咧啊，抹完饼之后啦，咁佢就攞起咗咧佢嗰阵时嘅葡萄酒，即系我哋而家嘅礼宾篮 ，OK 啊。咁咧就佢又话啊，呢个咧系我为你流嘅宝血嚟噶，系为咗咧可以。赦免你哋一切嘅罪过，洁净你哋噶。Yeah, Jesus also said like, ah,、uh, pick up his、uh, drinks, his、uh, wine, and says like, this is his blood because of my blood, um, I can wash your sins. 咁咧呢个咧系好重要嘅一个样嘢，就系、是、耶稣原来已经原谅晒我哋所做嘅唔好嘅嘢噶啦。Yeah, it's very important to understand and believe that like God has forgiven us. 唔好嘅嘢已经喺十字架上面，佢佢想俾我哋咧有个好嘅将来。Yeah, Jesus wants to give us a, a great future ahead. 好想帮助你。Really wants to help us. 好想俾你见到咧，你嘅将来有几咁有盼望嘅。Yeah, wants to show us the hope. 咁咧，我哋咧祈祷完之后咧，我哋一齐领呢个圣餐，好嘛 ？Yeah, let's pray and、uh, enjoy the communion. 亲爱天父。诶诶 ，Dear God， 好多谢咧，你派差派咗咧，你嘅独生子耶稣基督咧，去写喺十字架上边。Yeah, thank you for sending like your only son Jesus to、uh, sacrifice on the cross for us。因为你好爱我哋每一个。Because you love every of us。你咧将所有我哋唔好嘅嘢咧都钉在十字架上边。Yeah, you wash away our sins。俾我哋咧可以享有一个美好嘅将来。And let us have a great future。俾我哋相信咧有医治嘅盼望。Yeah, to give us hope of healing。可能睇紧影片。
面嘅朋友咧，有啲医治嘅需要求神咧，你去医治佢哋。Yes, some of us might have a、uh, um the the healing hope. 可能有啲咧係誒喺過往裏邊咧有啲掙扎、有啲唔好嘅事喺生命裏邊發生。And like there might be some struggles and challenges in life。神啊，我哋今日咧去領呢個聖餐嘅時候，其實神咧你都釋放呢啲嘢。Yeah, Jesus, we pray for your healing and your release for all these uh 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 problems。我將呢啲嘢咧都交俾你。Yeah, we surrender all of our problems to you。因為我相信咧，你想俾我哋一個好嘅將來同埋盼望俾我哋。Yeah, because we believe for a great future, a great plan ahead。感謝你，耶穌。Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate. 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 Let's <laughs> and we can, we can take the juice together.、Yeah. It's only at Ravenna. Yeah. Don't worry. 感谢耶稣 Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 哇！嚟到咧，我哋信息嘅时间啦吓。Yeah, it's the God's worst time。我哋好相信咧，神嘅话语咧可以改变你嘅生命、哦。Yeah, we believe that like God's word can change your life。我相信咧，我哋咧熄咗个 mon 啊，离开我哋手机嘅时候咧，我会发觉咧有啲嘢唔同嘅吓。Yeah, we believe that like after you hearing the message, like there will be something different。Yeah， 咁咧，我哋而家准备好我哋嘅心。Yeah, let's prepare. 準備我哋嘅筆記簿。Yeah, let's prepare. 因為咧，我哋嘅 Monty 牧師會分享咧，關於係嘅永恆喎嚇。Yeah, because our pastor Monty will share about eternity. 究竟咧，我哋而家在世嘅人生同永恆嘅生命係點樣嘅咧 ？Yeah, so how does it relate from our like the life right now and after death? 嚟咯，一齊靠近啲咯。Yeah, let's get closer. Come on. Hey, Life House! If you're watching from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon so you can be notified about our newest content. Also, if you're watching from Facebook, don't forget to follow our page and also share it with your family and friends. One last thing:、uh, we will be uploading all of our newest and weekly messages onto all podcast platforms. So stay tuned for that, and also you can listen to it whenever and wherever you want. Now, let's get into the time of message. Woo! <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the message. Monty here, and I am so excited to jump into this brand new series with you all. Yes, we are in the month of October, and kicking off this series, we are going to be talking about eternity. I guess this whole series is going to be talking about eternity, but this series is going to be called "Closer to Eternity." Oh, this is going to be good. We're going to talk about all things. You know, heaven and God and how big He is. And so today's message I've called, "How Big Is God?" And today we're going to look at all kinds of incredible things. I got some really exciting images, even a video. I'm, it's going to be about all these incredible things of how big God is. And I'm so excited to share with you guys today's message. I remember. I grew up in Australia. I'm Australian, and、uh, I moved to Japan when I was nine. But when we were living in Australia, we were living in a town called Toowoomba, and our relatives, my grandma and and other extended family, they all lived in a place called Sydney. Now, Toowoomba to Sydney is actually super far away. And what we would do when we'd want to go visit my relatives is we would drive down from Toowoomba to Sydney. And this is not like a small drive. This is not like a three-hour drive. This is a twelve-hour drive. This is a long trip, and we had to take many pit stops on the way. And there was many tears and crying and fighting in the back seat, but <laughs> we would always make it to Sydney and always be good. But you know what? I remember this one time as we were driving back from Sydney to Toowoomba, and if you know anything about Australia, you know there's not much there. <laughs> Outside of the cities, there's not much there other than a few kangaroos. 
And uh, I remember one night we were driving back. And so I was sleeping in the back of the car. I think I was kind of like horizontal to the, to the seat. And I remember like waking up and looking out of the, the side window. The side window was at the top of me. And I looked up and I could just see the most beautiful sky of stars I've ever seen in my life. Now, living in Japan, we don't get many stars. <laughs> living in Tokyo, we don't get many stars at all. We're lucky if we can see like two stars out there in the sky. In Australia, where we live, we could see more stars in the sky, but this was different. This starry night that I remember seeing as a child was beautiful. And we could see, you know, like the Milky Way in the sky. And I remember thinking like, is this a dream? Like, what is this? This is so stunning, so magnificent, so beautiful. And as a child, I remember how impacting the stars, the sky, this creation was. And so today, guys, we're going to talk about God, who is the creator. He has created everything. Everything natural that we see on this earth has been created by a master creator, a creator that loves his creations. And so we're going to talk about uh, what it says in Genesis chapter one. This is the very beginning of the Bible. This is where it all begins. And so let's jump into Genesis chapter one, verse one. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So from the very beginning, we have God separating these two spaces. We have the heavens, we have heaven, and we have earth. It says the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So God didn't just make the earth and it was just like this like blob of something. I don't know of like whatever you want to call it, if it's molten lava or if it's actual water or if it's like gas or whatever it is. When God created it, his spirit was there from the very, very beginning. So God wasn't just in heaven. God's spirit hovered over his creation. He was always and is constantly close to his creation. It says, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came. And this marked the first day. So in this creation story, we have these big scenes and the Bible calls them days. Now people could take that literally, people take that seasonally. I'm not here to get into what that is, but I'm here to say that God on each one of these days created something magnificent, something absolutely breathtaking because all of God's creation is breathtaking and all of God's creation, as we'll see, is good. See, every time God creates something, he calls it good, right? Isn't that amazing? And so it goes on. So that was the first day. The second day said, then God said, let there be space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of heaven. And God called that space sky. And evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. So now God is putting this, this space in between these two creations that he's making. And throughout all of it, God is there in his creation and God declares that his creation is good. It goes on to describe what happens on the third day, how God creates the land and he creates the sea and he creates the plants and everything is good. And then we come to the fourth day in verse 14. It says, Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons and the days and the years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. So God made the stars. God made all of this, this vast expanse of universe that we are still discovering to this day. 
It said God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day, this is the sun, and the smaller one to govern the night, that's the moon. It says He also made the stars. And God set these lights in the sky to light the earth to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So this is a beautiful scene of God painting the universe. So He makes the heaven and He makes earth. And then He makes all of this vastness that we, we are now, as I said, still continue to discover, which we call the universe. And God, boom, He makes it. He speaks it into being. And when God speaks, there is creation. There is life. As we continue to read through the the creation story, and I won't read it today with us all together, but it goes on to talk about how God creates the birds and the air and the fish and the sea and the animals and creatures and everything on the land. And it was good. And then ultimately, God comes to the sixth day and He creates humans. He creates the first human being. And on the seventh day, it says God rests and all of His creation, He looks on all of His creation from big to small. And He says every single one is good. Isn't that great? That God is a good creator. And so that's the first thing we want to talk about today is that God created everything. Now, humans, we have the ability to also create. We can make man-made objects, but we can't make like animals out of nothing. We can't make a human out of nothing. We can't make stars. We can't make atmosphere. We can't make all of this stuff out of nothing. We have to borrow from the things that God has created for us humans to create something, right? God is the master creator. He is the greatest. He is the Lord of Lords. He is above all. And He's created all these amazing things. And He loves His creations. In the Psalms, it has so many beautiful Psalms. And one of the Psalms talks about how God has knit us together. How when God creates us, He knits us together in our mother's womb. When you know knitting, knitting is a very tedious task where you have to get every stitch right so that you get a proper piece of fabric or quilt or whatever you're making, right? You have to get every stitch right. Well, human anatomy is so much more complex than just like a scarf or something like that. God knits us together. Every cell, every strand of DNA, every piece that makes us who we are, God knits us together in our mother's womb. Before we are even born, before we even take our first breath, God has put so much love and focus and design into each one of us. God is a master creator. And God created this little blue planet that we call Earth. (laughs) And I think it's interesting. The better that science gets, the more that it actually confirms that there is a creator. The more the science gets more complex and the, the more you know detail we get, the more it points to there has to be a creator. There's no way that all of this stuff just happens by chance. That, oh yeah, this just happened and then, oh, there was just all of a sudden, you know, something appeared and then that evolved into this and this and this and this and this. No, 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 no. God is the creator. And science more and more points back to God the Creator. And our planet, this planet Earth, is proof that God is a master creator because a little bit closer to the sun, our Earth would be too hot and we would all burn and die. A little bit further away from the sun, then we would all be too cold and freeze to death. Both deaths are terrible, right? So we are in this little perfect little space in our universe, in our solar system, in the perfect space of where the sun is. And our atmosphere is perfect. Our oxygen is perfect. Our gravity is perfect. The water, H2O, that supports all life on this earth is perfect. Every single building block that we take for granted in our lives that make up where we live is perfect. It's planned, it's ordered, it's not chaotic, it's not chance. 
there's a plan and a purpose to everything that God has made. And we call this little planet the Goldilocks planet. You know the story of Goldilocks and, and the bears and how one was too like the porridge was too hot and one was too cold and one was just right. That's us. That's here. This planet. We are just right. It's called the Goldilocks planet because everything is a little bit too perfect, don't you think? Just one of these things out of sync, one of these things out of whack might not even be able to support life at all. But because everything is perfectly aligned, Earth can sustain us. Earth can sustain life. Now, are there other planets in the universe that might be able to sustain life? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Who knows? God is God and God can do whatever He wants. <laughs> but we're here to focus on the creation that we have around us. Yeah? And I, I love how we are one speck in the universe. The universe is so large. Even from us to the moon was a far, far thing to go to. And then we have other planets in our solar system that moves around the sun. And to get from here to Mars or something like that is going to take years and years and years. Forget about going outside of our solar system. Like all of, like the universe is massive. Massive, 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 and I'm go I'm so excited to show you guys some things that I've been that I've been seeing. And uh, there's this one little video that I found on YouTube the other day, and it shows this size comparison of you know Earth and other planets and our solar system, the Milky Way that we live in, to all of this craziness that we have in the known world. And so let's watch this video together. Okay. So I got this video on two times speed and we're going to see all these amazing planets. So we got, you know, Pluto, which people say is not a planet anymore. Hashtag tier. I thought Pluto was a planet. I don't know what it is anymore, but I think people are trying to get it back. Anyways, we got some different moons from other planets in the universe. We got Mars, Venus, Earth. This is Earth. This is our tiny planet. Kelper is another planet in another solar system. Could be cool. Might want to check it out one day. And now we're getting some big guys. Saturn, Jupiter. And now we have the sun. It says dwarf star, which means small. <laughs> we have giant star, red giant star, Arcturus giant star, supermassive black hole, red giant star, super giant star. I just love how like they're running out of words to describe the size of these stars. It's like giant, hyper giant. <laughs> Like, we don't have words. Oh, we're back to Supergiant. Okay. Oh, no, we're back to Hypergiant. Look at the size of these, these suns. These suns are humongous. Our sun is a tiny, tiny baby sun. Now, what is this? What do you think this is? Look at this. What is this? What is this, big boy? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a supermassive black hole. <laughs> Look at the size of these things. These things are huge. But then, what is this? This is a nebula. This is like a, a cluster of gas and stars in the sky. And there's another one, like what is that? It looks beautiful, insane. Another incredible shot. And we zoom out and now we have a galaxy. And this one is called a dwarf galaxy, which means it's a small galaxy. And then we have, <laughs> it's called Tarantula, which is pretty sick. Sleeping Beauty, that's a cool name for a galaxy. Look how beautiful that is. Milky Way, this is our galaxy, yay! And then we've got another galaxy, Andromeda, that's pretty close to us. And we have, what is that, hypergalaxy? Super cluster? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and then what is this? This massive orb is what it says. It's called the observable universe. So you saw that, right? You saw us zoom out from Earth to other planets, to the sun, to other suns, to this black hole, to solar systems, to all of this stuff. And it zooms all the way out and it says the observable universe. Do you know what that tells me? Is that means there's more to the universe that is unobservable. The universe is massive, massive. And we are just this tiny, tiny speck in this universe. And God that created this universe is bigger than the universe. And this God would seek to have a relationship with us. We are these tiny, tiny, tiny little specks of dust in 
this grand space that God has created and God cares about us. He, he, he wants a relationship with us. And I love this interaction between God and a man named Abraham. And Abraham has this incredible relationship with God, the God of the universe. When we say God of the universe, that's big, right? And, and he's having a conversation with God. And during this time, Abraham is in, in a bit of a, a hard place in life. You know, he's having a bit of a, a bit of a sook, as we say in Australia, <laughs> where he's feeling sad. He's feeling sorry for himself because God had given him a promise, but Abraham hadn't seen that promise yet. How many of us tend to respond like Abraham? God has given you a promise and yet we haven't seen it yet. Therefore, we think God doesn't care or God's not listening or God blah, blah, blah. So God takes Abraham outside of his tent, right? He has this interaction. In Genesis 15, verse 5, it says, Then the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. I love this scene because I feel like God is being a bit cheeky. He's like, count the stars if you can, <laughs> knowing full well that it is impossible to count the stars because now Abraham didn't know this then. Like Abraham would have looked in the sky and he would have seen a sky similar to maybe what I saw in Australia that night, seeing this beautiful canvas in the sky of like millions of stars and thinking, wow, what a big universe there it is out there. But what we can see from this earth is so tiny compared to how many stars and galaxies made up of stars there actually are. There's like trillions and billions, and I don't know what the next, you know, counter above that is. <laughs> There's so many. God is being cheeky. He's saying, count the stars if you can, because God knows how many stars there are. He's the one that put them there. He's the one that made them. And he's saying to Abraham, come on, Abraham, I'm bigger then your problem. Trust in me. Don't look at your situation. Look at me. And I love this. We live on this tiny speck in this one little galaxy called the Milky Way. And I want to show you guys some images of the Milky Way. And so here we go. Here's an image. This is from NASA. And this is our Milky Way. And this thing is huge. And when you zoom in, it's got this little speck with a little ring there. And that's our sun. In this entire galaxy called the Milky Way, our sun is a tiny speck. Our solar system is a tiny speck. And you see that little ring, that little circle there. <laughs> that's what we can see. That's what we can see. So when God said to Abraham, count the stars if you can, if, if Abraham even did try and count all of the stars he could see in the night, which would have taken him, I don't know how many years, every night he gets out his little notebook, all right? <laughs> Starting up from uh, 572,000. <laughs> That's all we can see in our own galaxy. Our galaxy is massive and we are just one galaxy of millions. And so guys, I, w I was on this NASA website for a while. And when I say I got lost on this website, I got lost. I got deep into this website. I just was spending hours just going through all of these incredible, beautiful images of what God's creation looks like, His good creation. And I want to share just a few with you guys. Now, if you want to go check out NASA's website for yourself and find all these catalogs, please do it. It is so beautiful. It's actually like touching. It's impacting to see what a, a beautiful creation that God makes, what an incredible God that we serve, who He is. And so let's have a look like, so here's an image of a spiral galaxy. Well, most of our galaxies are spirals. They have this kind of spiral shape. <laughs> so let's take a look at a few of them. Here's another one. It just looks beautiful. You can see like the entire arc, the entire motion. And in this galaxy, in any galaxy, there are solar systems. Each sun, each, each star is a sun, right? And each sun is a solar system. Perhaps there's planets, perhaps there's like all kinds of stuff. I don't know. But each one of these specks of light is a sun. That's insane. That's in a galaxy, in one galaxy. And these are different galaxies. Look at this galaxy. It looks like a donut. <laughs> 
looks amazing. Or it looks like a big, you know, the like a big eye. But look at this one. This is a, they call this one the firework galaxy because it looks like fireworks just going off. There's beautiful colors everywhere. It's stunning. And this one, I think this is one of my favorites. This galaxy is called the Sombrero Galaxy. <laughs> and this is what a galaxy looks like from the, from the edge. Normally we, we see these images of, of galaxies, it's like from the top down. But this is what a galaxy looks like from the edge. It's this beautiful ring. It looks like a halo in the sky. Absolutely stunning. And then we don't only have galaxies in the universe. We got all kinds of stuff out there in the universe. And there's this, these things called nebula. Nebulae? Not sure what the uh, plural there is for that. It's like octopus and octopi. But anyway, we got these nebulas. <laughs> nebulae. And it's just these, these beautiful formations. And, you know, we reckon it's gas or whatnot, but it looks stunning. So let's ch check this one out. This is two combining or crashing into one another at the same time. Isn't that stunning? And then we go down and there's another one called the cat's eye. Look at that. What is that? Absolutely beautiful. There's one here. This is called the eye of God. And it absolutely looks like that. It looks like an eye in the universe. So stunning. We have a look at this. I don't even know what this is. What is this? The celestial towers or something like that? These things, look at that. It's beautiful. This is just like, it looks like a sunset, but it's like a space sunset. I love it. And I love this final one here too. Like, this looks like something out of like Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Wars or something sci-fi, something that we make up, but this is not made up. This is God, the creator, and he makes these, these beautiful creations. And sometimes we can't see it with the naked eye. We have to get all these fancy cameras and fancy types of, you know, beams and lasers to see God's invisible qualities. But when we see it, it's stunning. Like, how, how can you tell me that there is no creator? How can you tell me that God doesn't exist when we have things like this in the universe that we can't explain? We can't explain. And then I want to see, I want to show you guys this photo. This is just, a, it's called a cluster of stars. It's just like, where is the blackness in this? There's more stars than black in this image. It's a cluster of stars. This is millions and trillions of suns. But you know what, as, as incredibly cool as that is, let me show you this photo. And you're thinking, oh, that's less stars than the first photo. Actually, if you zoom in on this photo, these are not stars, these are galaxies. Stars are in the galaxies, right? <laughs> what we looked at was a cluster of stars. What now we're looking at is a cluster of galaxies. This is beautiful. This shows the bigness of our God. This God is so big and so large and He loves us and He created us. The same God that created all of these galaxies that created our solar system, our planet and all of that. He loves us. You know what they reckon? They reckon our little solar system, our little sun and, and our little friends and planets, our neighborhood is like a, a 10 yen coin in the, the land of America. America, <laughs> 10 yen coin. That's our solar system. And then smaller than that is where we live. Our sun, our planet is so, so tiny <laughs> in, in, in just our galaxy. And there's millions, millions of galaxies. Guys, like I, I'm, I'm really excited by this stuff because it shows just how beautiful God is and the creations that he makes. And so let's, let me read a few scriptures with you from Psalms because back then in the Bible days, they didn't have telescopes. <laughs> they didn't have these things that they could see. And so Psalm 19, 1 to 2, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the works of His hand. Day after day they pour forth speech, and night after night they reveal knowledge. It's just, it's so true. The stars, the sky proclaims that there is God. Proclaims the goodness and the greatness and the bigness of God. We can see it all around us. We can see God. We can see the evidence of God. Psalm 8, 3 to 4 also says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings, 
that you care for them. <laughs> exactly! Who are we? These tiny, small specks in this very, very large painting that God would even notice, that God would even care. And that's the final thing I want to say, that although God is so big, He is also so close because God cares. He made us. We're not just some little experiment that He tried in one corner of this massive galaxy. No, we, it says He created the heavens and the earth. Before He created the other galaxies and the rest of the stars, He, he created the heavens and the earth. You see, we are at the forefront of God's mind. We are the first thing that God is thinking about. He created a place for us because He wanted a creation to have a relationship with. He wanted sons and daughters in this human form. And you know what? <laughs> you know, we, we messed up. We sinned. Adam and Eve, they, they sinned and, and that world has fallen. But God sent Jesus to fix all of that because God didn't want things to stay in that state. God wanted that relationship back. He said, I created these people, these beings, and I want a relationship with them. And so God sent Jesus, God himself, Jesus as God became flesh. He lowered himself to our form. <laughs> the, the God that created all of that lowered himself to become the same form, the same flesh and blood that we are so that Jesus could live the perfect life and he could die on a cross to take our sins away so that we could have a relationship with God, so that we could know the creator of the universe, the creator of those galaxies, of those nebulas, of those stars, of all of that. That creator God wants a relationship with us. He died. He, he became human flesh and died for us, but he didn't stay dead. He rose again three days later, and He is alive today. And Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything appropriate in its time, and He has also set eternity in their heart, without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. We will never know the grandness of God. We will never know the bigness of God. How big is God? We will never know. Even when we get to heaven, I, do you, I don't know. Do, are we actually going to be able to comprehend the bigness of God once we go to heaven? I don't know. What a thought. I just thought of that right now. Interesting. But it says God has placed eternity in our hearts. That craving to know the Creator. That hole that we try to fill with all of these other earthly things. God has put eternity in our hearts. Eternity is real. God is real. Heaven is real. And all of that reality wants a relationship with us. He wants to help us. And so today, I want to finish this, this first episode of our, you know, getting closer to eternity series by saying God has put eternity in our hearts. And these next few weeks, we're going to talk more about what that means, what eternity actually is, what it looks like. But today, I hope that it wasn't just, you know, a few cool images that we looked at together. I hope that we somehow grasped a little bit more of just how big and how wonderful our God is and how good we and all of His creation is as well. And so right now, guys, I'd love to pray with you all together. And so if you want to, why don't you raise your hands with me? And I just want to just pray a prayer of blessing. And God, I just pray for every person here, God. I pray that as we go through our lives, we, we go through things. We, we have struggles and we have doubts and we go through problems, God. And sometimes our problems feel so big. But God, I pray that through today's message, God, that we would recognize that you are so much bigger. God, you are the king of the world. You are the king of the universe. And so, God, I pray that we would be able to understand that you are so big and that we can put our faith in you, that we can trust you, that we don't have to look at our problems. And though they feel big, God, that you are so much bigger than anything that we go through, anything that we experience. God, let us put our faith in you. Pray you help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And lastly, I just want to pray for anyone who wants to make that decision to believe in Jesus. Like I mentioned, God loves you so much. He sent Jesus to die for you. And you can have that relationship with Him today. So I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say now. And when I say now, I'm, going to, I'm just going to ask you to make that decision to raise your hand or to make that decision in your heart to accept Jesus, the God, the, oh, the creator of the universe, to accept Him into your life. Are you ready? Three, 
two, one, now. Why aren't you accepting it? Let me pray for you all. God, I thank you for these beautiful people that you love them so much more than, than the galaxies and the nebulas and all these incredible things that you've made that God, you love them so much more than any of that. And so God, I pray right now that you come into their life and you fill them with your love and your grace, that you wipe away their past, wipe away their sins. And God, I pray that you give them a hope for the incredible future that you have. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I'm really excited for this series. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Make sure you tune in next week for the next one. It's going to be good. See ya then. Bye. Oh, dang. Hold your Leo Sunsega. Yeah, awesome. I love the message. Oh, yeah. Yes, full of perspective. Yeah, oh, Jung, you know, they would chill out a wing hung a something. You got to join the whole good thing. Yeah, let's make a good decision to to live a, a life for eternity. Are you pangola? You can let a highly go get a joke of fancy or kidding. Yeah, I know that like some of our friends made good decisions. I like Ganja, yes, so are you to follow Jesus? The gauge, I mean, you're linky, wabby, I'd hang on. Yeah, please let us know that like you made such a good decision. What's any comment? Oh, I'll come to your yes, oh, Daka. Yeah, or leave us a comment. You want to get a link to that? You can let Jim be all that Tong Lay, like Lun Haiwa. Yeah, because our leaders are prepared to connect with you. You want to. So this one is not just one person, it's one person who can walk with us. Yeah, we are never alone in church or in church family. So you can join our connect group. Or you can join our connect group. Or you can join us, join our connect group. Or you can join us, join our connect group. Or you can join us, join our connect group. Or you can join us, join our connect group. Or you can join us, join our connect group. Or you can join us, join our connect group.